Okay, now the rest of these little bones we'll kind of see on the skull in some different views, but I wanted to show you the palatine bone. Palatine bone shaped like an L. Here's the small part of the L, and then the long part of the L goes down here. There's one on either side. They come together at that medium palatine fissure in the front. This is your horizontal plate of the palatine bone. This is the vertical plate of the palatine bone. And inside the orbit, you have a teeny tiny piece of the palatine bone called the orbital plate of the palatine bone. Not too much with the palatine bone. The zygomatic bone is here. Okay, notice it's kind of shaped like a triangle. It has three processes on it. One, two, three. This process attaches to the frontal bone, so it's frontal process of the zygomatic bone. This process attaches to the temporal bone, so it's temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And this process here attaches to the maxilla, so it's maxillary process of the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone also forms part of the infraorbital margin, so this would be infraorbital margin of the zygomatic bone. Inferior nasal concha I showed you already. That's at the bottom of the nasal passage here, and then the vomer here in the front. If we, well, we'll take that off in a second to look at the vomer, but here's the nasal bones again. Here's the lacrimal bone, and there's a hole in the lacrimal bone called the lacrimal fossa. The nasolacrimal canal goes down into that fossa. Okay, let's take this apart and look at the vomer. Ah! Okay, so here's your vomer all by itself. And it is going to attach to the uh, ethmoid bone, basically. It's going to kind of sit in there like this. And the ethmoid bone will kind of sit like this on top of it. And together, the ethmoid bone, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, and the vomer make up the nasal septum inside the nose. And I'll show you a mid-sagittal section of that in a second, but it kind of looks like that. You can see vomer here at the bottom, and you can see perpendicular plate of the ethmoid here. If we looked from the back, we pretty much just see vomer. Okay, so that's the vomer. This is the palatine bones. You can see how they're shaped like an L. Together they make a U. So here's an L, here's an L. Vertical plate, horizontal plate. And then this little piece is the orbital plate. And then vomer. This one might be a bit better for seeing some of the holes. You can see that foramen magnum nicely there. On either side you've got jugular foramen with the jugular vein, cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11 passing through. You have internal acoustic meatus here. This one you have foramen lacerum, and then here's your carotid canal right in front of that, or behind that rather. Foramen lacerum, carotid canal, foramen spinosum, foramen ovale, foramen rotundum, optic canal, Ooh. Let's see. Superior orbital fissure. Cristic galli with your cribriform plate and olfactory foramen. Optic plate or orbital plate of the frontal bone. Lesser wing of the sphenoid. Hypophyseal fossa. Foramen magnum again, occipital condyles on either side. You can see hypoglossal foramen, mastoid process, styloid process, stylomastoid foramen. So here's your mastoid process, styloid process, stylomastoid foramen. This would be your mandibular fossa. This is carotid canal, or uh, jugular foramen, sorry. <clears throat> this is carotid canal here and here. Foramen lacerum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, pterygoid process, medial plate, 
lateral plate, bomer, horizontal plate of the palatine bone, palatine process of the maxilla, incisive fossa. This is infra or inferior orbital fissure. If we look in the orbit, you can say inferior orbital fissure here, superior, oops, superior orbital fissure here and here, and then optic canal here. Notice that optic canal is round. And this is your lacrimal fossa, infraorbital foramen, supraorbital foramen. zygomatic process of the temporal bone, temporal process of the zygomatic bone, frontal process of the zygomatic bone, 